actually an impromptu video. It's going to be a quick one, a tutorial on placing oval eyes in a reborn doll kit and just what I do to help aid that process and why it's a little more tricky than a round eye. So I actually was inspired to do this video because I had just posted one where I did a reborn doll kit unboxing video and I had some eyes in there and I talked about, uh, you know, that I have kind of a trick to help set oval eyes, which can be really persnickety. And I had two people comment that they would love to see how I do that. So this one's for you, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for suggesting it. Um, okay, so I am working on a Jenny Awake. This is a custom doll that I'm working on for somebody. I just finished painting hair and I'm going to be rooting some hair on top. It's going to be combi hair. And if you've heard combi before and you were too shy to ask people what the heck that meant, that is basically short for combination hair, which means that you're going to have painted and then some rooting. Typically that rooting is just going to be somewhere on the top. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? You don't have to have um, the muss and fuss of a fully rooted doll um, and worry about the hair coming out or keeping it nice, but you also get that realism from some of the rooted hair on top of the painted hair. So that is what I'm working on here. Before I get started right into the eyes, I want to express again, I know that there has been a lot of faux pas with the Bountiful Baby kits in the past, but I'm really, really impressed with their vinyl now. I've purchased a lot of Bountiful Baby kits uh, as of late because you can't really resist their sales. They have some crazy sales going on. So I took the leap a little while ago and said, okay, I'm going to try this again. I kind of moved away from those kits and did only sculpted kits that you get from vendors, from artists that are sculpting the kits and having them produced because whatever factories they use typically are just better. Like the vinyl's better. Um, Bountiful baby vinyl kits are so much better now. They take paint beautifully. Um, I really love it. And it, it's something I'm not afraid of anymore. So I just want to stress that again because I know some artists, you know, have some kits from Bountiful Baby that they're like, oh my gosh, I love the Darren Asleep and I love this one. I love that one, but I don't want to touch the vinyl. I had a bad experience. They are using another factory because the paint is taking beautifully and it's just really a dream to paint. No issues with paint not sticking for me at all. Everything is working out just perfectly well. So, okay, so we have a Jenny Awake and the customer sent me these oval eyes that she wanted and they're actually really pretty, but I don't think it's gonna pick up on the camera. They're kind of like a gray color. I love that. So when you put oval eyes in, so, um, okay, doll kits have round sockets. Let's see if I can get that visual here okay um so you see that socket it's round that's the eye socket and you see the slit and the light coming through because I took an exacto knife and I kind of slid it halfway so that I can insert an eye in there see a little flap now I put the eye in and then you'll see it from the front so with the oval eyes Obviously, that's not the shape of this socket. This socket is totally round in here. Let me get back to it. Oh, there we go. So this is oval, so it's gonna kind of swim around there a little bit. So all you have to do is you insert the eye, and with oval eyes, let me talk about this really quick. Because they swim around there a little bit, sometimes they're gonna go that way. They're gonna go vertical but you want them to be horizontal. So you gotta play with it a little bit and make sure that they stay horizontal because they can kind of move up that way. In fact, they might do that while we're playing with it right now. So um, I'm gonna stick the eye in into my little slit that I made, make sure that it's going horizontally. And let's see, there we go. So that's what it looks like, but you see how it's kind of just floating around in there? It's not really 
you know, filled out. So what I'm gonna do is take a sponge. I'm just gonna tear a piece of the sponge, really small piece like that. And I'm gonna put that behind the eye. So in between, let's see if I can get this. See how you see the slit open? I have the eye in there. It's gonna be in between the eye and the back here. I'm gonna stick that little sponge behind it. And just play around with it. Oops, I dropped it, hold on. Play around with it a little bit. You might wanna cut it shorter, you know, or tear it a little bit shorter. It just depends on how much of a security blanket you kind of need back there. So, and I keep that in when I glue. So this is gonna also help you maneuver the eye and kind of get it to where you want it. And now it's really stuck in there really nicely. So we have one, we're just gonna do the same thing with the other side. So you see what that looks like? Uh, you kind of have, let me see if I can get it to focus a little better. I keep hitting my, um, if you hear that noise, <laughs> I have this um, really cool recliner that has like a button on the side to make the foot thing go out and I keep hitting it with my elbow. Okay, there we go. You see the cotton there just sticking out? I'm sorry, not the cotton, the sponge sticking out there. That's what it looks like. You're just going to you're gonna keep it there. You're, it's gonna be underneath all the glue that you put on when you're done. So we're gonna put the other eye in. Let me, there we go. Make sure it's, there we go. So we got that eye in, and then I already cut off a piece from this sponge here. I'm just gonna stick it in the back, so in between the eye and the flap. And um, it's going to just make it easier to stay. And it's going to not wiggle around and swim around in there as much. And then you're just going to play with the eyes, get them down to where you want it, which that sponge actually kind of helps you with moving those around. Right now I have one pupil that's way too high and one that's perfect on this side. So I'm just going to... Um, I'm going to play around with that back here. There we go. I'm going to get that pupil to match. I like the pupils to kind of sit on the waterline of the eye more than the middle. But there we go. So we have two eyes and two pieces of sponges. I, I'll probably play with them a little bit more. So what I recommend is just set the eyes Play with them when you think you've got them, you know, matching, the pupils are kind of centered the same and all of that, then set it aside, go get yourself something to drink, go stick a load of laundry in, whatever, come back in 10 minutes and just stare at the baby, pick it up and look at it again. And if you feel like it's not looking directly at, directly at you or something's off, then, you know, move them around a little bit more. But basically this helps so much, that sponge, it really helps. And then um, this is what we got underneath. So as you can see, I have sponges sticking out, which is okay. If you want, you can trim those a little bit. So you can even cut, instead of using like a sponge this size, you can cut this in half, right? You can use this little piece. You can use just a little fat square piece it's really your preference but what the purpose of that is is to give like like a kickstand to the back of the eye so it's not wobbling around and driving you crazy and driving the collector crazy <laughs> once they get the baby and then um you know play with the eyes set them right and then you can glue and just remember you're going to keep even if you trim off those ends that are sticking out which i typically don't um you still want to glue those sponges in so whether they're the pieces are sticking out of the socket or you trim them down so they're just inside the socket doesn't matter you still want to keep them in as you glue so you're going to be gluing those in so there we go i hope that's helpful um oval eyes can be tricky they're a different shape than 
99.9% .9 of all of the eye sockets and doll kits, I get it, they're not the best, but they are cheaper because they're such a pain in the butt. Um, and if you, you know, want to get a nice glass eye that's cheaper, you're probably going to be looking at some oval eyes. Don't be afraid of it. Um, don't get too frustrated with it because you can do some modifications to help you get that place better. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. If you have any other tricks about oval eyes, please leave the comments below. Um, I know that uh, another tip that you'll hear often is to size up. So the most common eye size for a reborn doll is gonna be 20 millimeters. Um, it's just the most common size. So let's say your doll kit says that it takes 20 millimeter eyes. If you get oval, then you'll hear a lot of um, advice to size up the oval eyes so that you get a 22 oval eye. Or if you, you know, get a half round, you're gonna get exactly the size that the doll kit suggests. These are half rounds. Those fit perfectly in the eye socket. So a lot of people will say size up, and you know what? I can agree with that. I've done that. But what I find is that the eye can typically be too big for the baby. It just kind of depends on your preference. So like the actual eyeball just is a little too big for my taste in most cases when I size up. So I just feel like it looks bigger um, because it's, you know, obviously it's a bigger eye. So if you don't want that, you don't want to size up. Um, and the reason you size up again is because they're oval, they're oval shapes fitting in a round socket. Um, typically that oval shape is not going to fit right. So it's going to kind of wiggle around a little bit. So if you size up, you have less give in the back of that socket and it's just easier for it to fit better, but that's another way to do it. It's a great suggestion. I personally like to go with the size eyes that they suggest, and I like to just um, use this sponge for a way to modify it, and that's kind of the way I do it. So hopefully that's helpful. I hope you have a great day, and please consider subscribing for more tips and tricks.